Hello, welcome back to another episode of After Effects. We're going to be going through, again, some of the early things that you have to know about in composition. Uh, and what I've done here is I changed the frame rate to 30 frames per second, just because it makes the numbers a bit cleaner here. So we have this bar. So if we can, we can see like literally how many frames. Uh, so if we do that, for instance, you can see that to get to one second, we're going to need to go 30 frames, right? So it basically goes naught, colon 29, then one second. So what we can do is let's just uh, go back out again, get to see the whole thing. Uh, we're going to put the CTI over here, and then we're going to press the home button. And that what that does is it's going to put the CTI back at the beginning of the of the clip. Now we're going to press the end button, and that's going to put it at the end of the clip. Okay, let's zoom back in again, and we're going to show you a few more. So we want to. I would like to just have uh, this is a, this is a good way to show this one, right? So if we want to go forward a frame, we're going to need to press page down. So let's say, and so you can see, I press that ten times, and we get to ten frames. If I now press shift and page down, you can see we're going to inc increment by ten frames each time. Uh, and similarly, if we go page up. We're going to go back a frame, shift and page up. We're going to go back 10 frames. OK, so now we focused on navigation. Now I want to focus on zooming. So the way to do it is simply to use the equals and the minus keys to zoom in and out. So press equals. You can see I can zoom in. And then we press minus. We can zoom out. But if you, you'll notice one thing, though, like here I am, say I'm like the two second mark here. If I press equals to zoom in, You'll notice that there's the two, it's to the left now. It's actually not where I'd like it to be. I'd probably want that to be more central, right? So that I've actually can work around that area. So let's uh, let's choose a different time. I'm gonna do nine seconds now, around nine seconds. What I'm gonna do is press equals and then D, equals then D, equals then D. And you'll see now that I'm much more zoomed in. You can see this is the area I'm zoomed into here. But the advantage is, is that the nine seconds is actually much closer to where I want it to be. And so I would be able to navigate um, from say, like, you know, like uh, from to eight and 10 there to nine and 15 on the other side. So that would be, that is one way to do it, to press the letter D after you press uh, either equals or minus. Okay, so you'll notice on the timeline we have two things. So this one, you may have noticed that if we wanted to, for instance, focus on just say the first second, we could, we could do something like that. And then we got the first second uh, ready to edit. And then we can drag it all the way to the end, and then that gives us the whole thing. But there is actually another bar here, and it's actually on this level here. And it's called the time ruler, as you can see there. And what this time ruler lets you do is it lets you set the work area. So that's the area that you're currently going to work on in your composition. So the best way to, we need to start the beginning and end points. So what we're going to do is say we want to start at two seconds and end at eight seconds. So we'll put the CTI at two seconds, and we're going to press B. And then we're going to put the C. Uh, CTI at eight seconds and press N. So I just for some reason there's 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 a there's a biscuit called BN BN, and uh, it's also uh, in French. But that's probably a good way to remember the shortcuts for that one. Just like that, literally that's the first thing I thought of. So what we can then do is if we then press we can use the home and end keys again. Uh, shift and home gives us the beginning of that work area, and shift and end will be the end of that work area. And if we wanted to reset to the length of the clip here, all we'd need to do is just double click on it and it would reset. Uh, you'll also notice there is actually some additional info in the info panel. So you can see the work area duration is being changed there. So if I wanted to get it exact, it would actually be possible. Let's get that frame. So that would be a good way to get an exact figure. Okay, let's look at this button now. So this one lets you turn on the, the action safe and title areas. So what this does is it will, when you go to render it, if you wanted to not render the, the outside edge of your clip, you could actually see where those areas, and I believe it's 5 and 10% in, and all you have to do is press Alt and click, and you see now it's on, Alt click, and it's off. So just another interesting tip is that if we do Control Alt semicolon, we get the preferences button, and Control Alt apostrophe, or the at symbol, depending on what your keyboard looks like, gives you the keyboard shortcuts. So one thing we can also do is control apostrophe, and that's going to turn the grid on. 
Uh, you'll notice, unfortunately, just just so happens that the grid is green, which is not at all suited for this particular image. So we're going to do a control. So we're going to do control alt semicolon, and I wanted to go into this section with the grids, and you see the grid color is green, which is not really appropriate. So we'll do something which is going to show up a little bit better. Okay, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to change the color to black. And we're going to do grid line every every 500 pic pixels. That's fine. So here you can see this is what it looks like every 500 pixels. So that's going to be really useful to uh, manipulate images and objects on that. Subdivisions is four. We're going to change that to uh, you can change that to ten. Okay, so you can see the large box remains the same same size, but it's divided into equal blocks. So I think they would be 50 pixels square, right? Well, this, that, that, that would be the, the width and the height would be that. Okay. Okay, so the other grid is the proportional grid. We've got horizontal six, vertical eight. Let's take a look at that. So you can see this makes it a lot. It also, it, it actually looks like it may be more useful in terms of it helps you to see the overall size of what you're dealing with. I don't believe you can use the, the action safe areas at the same time now. So that the reason why these two are in, this, in their box. And you can also press, I think it's Alt with apostrophe, and that will, that will toggle it on and off as well. Okay, so we have rulers as well, and we could if we wanted to have rulers with a grid. So we can do, remember, Control apostrophe, will turn the grid on and off, and Alt apostrophe will turn the proportional grid on and off, which are both viewable while the rulers are there. Okay, so with rulers, we can drag out from here. So if we wanted to, for instance, try to let, we can drag a, a guide here. And then if we go to view, we can also lock guides there. So that'll give us another another way to see. And you'll see the guide position there is 2270. And from there, we can also turn off the rulers. So you can see we can leave the guides in place once we've put them in where we need them. You know, perhaps turn off the proportional grid as well if we wanted to for whatever reason have this specific area and there's also a snapping to guides and which is obviously very useful for objects but that'll do for this episode so thanks for watching